Hey everyone, welcome to another adventure. I've been away from home for almost a month, and in this time, I've explored some intriguing places here in Michigan. But a lot of folks say that if I don't get to the Upper Peninsula, I'll regret it. And so it's Friday afternoon, and I'm headed north. Tonight, I plan on boondocking at a spot I found scouting the map, and if I can't get there, I've seen plenty of possibilities for dispersed camping. You see, I have one goal for today, and that is to get across the Mackinac Bridge to Castle Rock in the Upper Peninsula. It's 5.30 in the afternoon, and Castle Rock is a four hour drive from here. And if I make it in time, then I've heard that the view into Horseshoe Bay is astonishing. That Walmart over there was super packed, so I decided to move over to another parking lot just across the street because I want to talk about the game plan for this weekend. I'm not trying to rush this trip, but I have to be back where I'm at by Sunday night. So that gives me about 48 hours to take in all that I can of Michigan's crown jewel, the Upper Peninsula. So here's the plan. First, I'm gonna drive the 240 miles to Castle Rock. I'm gonna hike up to the lookout and then bed down for the night somewhere near there. Second, around 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, I'm gonna cruise north to Sioux Locks. Once there, I'll attempt to gain access to an observation deck to watch some vessels pass through the locks. I'll also be on the lookout for some unique rocks that I just learned about that glow under UV light. Then by noon on Saturday, I wanna head west to Whitefish Point. I wanna dip my toes in Lake Superior and continue my search for the Uper Light Rocks. Then I'm gonna head further west to, to Quemenon Falls, and I've heard that the view there is beautiful. Finally on Saturday, I plan to head over to Painted Rocks National Shoreline and plan to yet again search for those ember light rocks. I'll most likely set up camp at Painted Rocks on Saturday night, and if time permits, I'll visit one of the clearest lakes in North America, Lake Kitch Itty Kippy. I know I massacred that pronunciation, so let me know in the comments what you think. It's a big itinerary, but I may never get this opportunity again. So while I'm in Michigan, I wanna experience all of its beauty that I can. So I just got to Castle Rock right behind me and I've got 35 minutes to get to the top of the rock because they're going to close at 9 p.m. Thank you so much. You're Follow the yellow uh, feet the whole way. There you go. Well, no, just to the door. Just to the door. I told them I'm a kind of a quick walker and that I would run up, but they said don't run up, but they do close at 9. We got Paul Bunyan, we got Bigfoot. And oh man, look at these steps. It's 195 feet. So I'm gonna guess there's probably about 300 steps. So I'm almost to the top and the view just from here is pretty spectacular. And one theme that I've seen is that the place is gated off pretty well. So you're not gonna get lost in nature with these gates all around the stairs. So the spot that I picked that I wanna do my camping tonight is out in the wilderness behind me. Dispersed camping is okay as long as you're following the leave no trace principles. You got your American flag right there at the top of the rock. And please make sure that you watch your step. So this is Castle Rock. This is a place that once you come up here, you could probably spend an hour or so really just enjoying the view. And some people enjoy the view so much that they leave coins all over the side of the rock here. It already feels like it's in the mid 60s weather-wise. 
and the walk down shouldn't be too bad. This is a beautiful place. I'm glad I took the stop here and I got plenty of time to go find a spot for some dispersed camping here in the Hiawatha National Forest. So I'm about to pull out and it looks like this car over here needs a jump. And I think I have jumper cables with me. I sure do. So I'm gonna go see if they need a jump. So I'll give you one set. And then just keep them separated, right? Go ahead and give it a try. Awesome. So here's something that I didn't expect to have to worry about. I'm here at the National Forest. I'm gonna do some dispersed camping. There's some folks just down the road right there shooting some guns. And so my planned location was gonna be generally in the direction that they're shooting. And I don't wanna go down range of live fire. So I might go check with them and see what they plan to do. You hear the popping? And just make sure that they're not going to shoot me while I'm sleeping on accident. These roads <laughs> are a little bit narrower than I expected. So this is not a maintained trail. And I'm probably going to scratch up my van a little bit. This is a little more than I planned on getting into. So I'm just going to back out and maybe track down the road a little bit and see if I can find a safer place to uh, bed down and I guess a place like this worst case mm -hmm. I tried to go to the first location that I had scouted out that I wanted to camp at and unfortunately that route was just way too tight for my van but I just found a little turnout a few miles down the road this does look like a perfect place for me to to pitch my my van for the night and I just want to show you how I am about a hundred feet off of the main road. So the, the national forest that I usually camp in, you have to camp a hundred feet from the maintained roads. So I'm on kind of a non-maintained turnout, which this is a perfect spot for a little camping. But in either direction down the road, there's essentially nothing around me. And this is gonna be where I set up shop for the night. Sounds like they got plenty of ammo to waste. It's a pretty good spot for me to be camping tonight where I am out of the, the view of, you know, any ongoing traffic, but I'm on a relatively flat spot that will be Perfect for camping. I got my pizza cooking. This trip is going according to plan. So tomorrow, once I get up and have a good breakfast, I'm gonna hit the road and head up to Sioux Locks. Today I got to Castle Rock and I got to see a beautiful view right at sunset. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna head out to Sioux Locks in a few minutes here, and the high is only supposed to be around 70 degrees today. Based on all the mosquitoes that I saw when I first parked here last night, I'm gonna go ahead and change into something with long sleeves. That way I'm a harder target for those mosquitoes. The most common question that I get asked about minivan camping is, where do I go to the bathroom? And hopefully this little thing is pretty self-explanatory. It compacts down nice and essentially it allows me to keep those leave no trace principles. I don't have to dig any holes. And when I'm done with whatever I'm doing, I just use these bags 
And then when I find a trash can, I throw all my trash, including my food trash from last night, in the trash can. It's so easy, you just pop out the sides, put the middle in, put the bag in, and put the top on, and then you're ready to work. Hopefully that was enough information on how to set that thing up. I almost always drink two cups of coffee, so no reason not to do that today. Between my refrigerator, cooking dinner, and making coffee, I've used about 20% of this battery overnight. And then I still have the EcoFlow. So that's the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max and the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. This is what I like to use primarily, and I use that for just charging like my laptops and stuff like that. This one is charged from the vehicle's 12 volt outlet, and this one is charged from the solar panel on the roof of my vehicle. Either way, it's plenty of power to keep whatever I need done, whether it's cooking or messing with my electronics. So I've got plenty of power in this minivan. I'm glad I brought this long sleeve shirt and these pants because it is about 10 degrees cooler than it was just, you know, 200 miles south of here. And the mosquitoes are everywhere. Ready for another day. I can feel the excitement setting in as we step off for another adventure. Or maybe it's just the coffee working. Either way, there's a lot to explore on the Upper Peninsula. And I hope you'll join me for the rest of the adventure. Welcome back and thank you for coming along with me to explore Michigan's Upper Peninsula in my minivan camper. I left home last night heading north with two goals in mind. First, get to Castle Rock Point and take in the breathtaking view before sunset. And second, find the perfect dispersed campsite in the nearby forest. It was more challenging than expected. The spot I chose on the map was more difficult to reach than my minivan could handle. And locals use the area as a makeshift plinking range. So I had to find a safer place, but I eventually settled down for a peaceful night's sleep. Please subscribe because I am on a mission to get to 100,000 subscribers in 2023. And I hope you enjoy this experience. We're heading out of Hiawatha National Forest East. And before the end of this trip, we're gonna get to Hiawatha National Forest West. This is where those folks were shooting their guns last night. And this was one of the spots that I had selected on my map that I thought could be a potential dispersed camping site. I'm glad I wasn't out camping behind those trees when those folks came and started shooting their guns. And uh, walking around the van from getting into the really dense trees last night, I don't think I got any big scratches at all. The only thing that was really scratched was probably my ego from not being able to take my front wheel drive Sienna into the wilderness out there and on top of that i have a warning light on my dash and luckily it's only my washer fluid is low and there's one last peek at castle rock before i hit the road but before we go too far i have to head back to saint ignace to fill up my tank and greet a local spider So I've spent the last probably 20 minutes in this town walking around and one thing I can tell you for sure is you're not going to be doing any stealth camping on the streets here because overnight parking in the entire town is off limits. In fact, the only places to stay in town are at hotels. So if you do plan to come here, you're going to either be doing dispersed camping, camping at a campground, or staying in a hotel. I stay corrected. It looks like this van has people camping in it and actually there's some folks sleeping in this car and then you have a little RV. But before I leave this uh, St. Ignace or St. Ignace area of Michigan, I just wanted to step out onto this pier here and show you guys the lighthouse. I have been talking quite a bit and now it's time to get up to the Sioux Locks. It's about 8.30 right now and they open at 9 a.m. and I'll be there when they're open so I can continue on with my journey. I paid for about 90 minutes, which should be plenty of time for me to get into the Sioux locks here, go up and maybe see some of the locks operating. So this here is the Sioux Lock Observatory, and we do have a boat coming in right now. So 
if I get up there in time, we'll be able to see that boat right there go through the locks. So that boat going through the locks right now is the KE Barker. And you can find out any boat that travels through the locks or at least any commercial vessel, the name of the vessel, the history of the vessel on a website called BoatNerds.com. A gentleman up on the observatory here told me about it while I was filming the KE Barker going through the lock. And then just on the other side of the locks is Canada. If this is your first stop of the day, something to keep in mind is that although the observatory does open at 9 a.m., the visitor center doesn't actually open until 10 a.m. So make sure if you need to take a break before you come in, you do that somewhere else. All right, guys, so that was Sioux Locks, and now I'm gonna head to my next destination for today. There is the bridge coming from Canada back into the United States. So that RV that you see right there, they're about to go through the Customs and Border Patrol, which is just about a mile down the road that way. All right, enough talking here in Sioux St. Mary. It's time to get to Whitefish Point. I almost forgot to fill up that uh, washer fluid before I hit the road. spot is actually much more busy than I would have expected based on looking at the map. You need tickets to get into the museum, but I don't think I'll need a ticket to get on this overlook over here. The 18 hours since leaving the Mitten has gone by so fast, but in this time I've traveled over 300 miles searching for an experience that I'll remember forever. The beauty here is breathtaking, and I realize that after traveling around the world, I've seen a lot, but I've also missed so much. One feeling I can't seem to shake is that in this moment, this is exactly where I was meant to be. Okay, so I didn't bring my UV light out here with me, and I may go back and get it, or just save it for later, but I did say I was gonna walk in or get my toes in Lake Superior. And that's what I'm about to do. Oh, that's some cold water. One thing I can tell you for sure is you're not gonna find those rocks, at least not the correct ones, without your UV light. Do I wanna go back and get my UV light or risk it and try to find those rocks when I get over to Pictured Rocks National Park? There certainly are a lot of rocks on the shoreline here. So I imagine if you are actively seeking those Uperlite rocks that you wouldn't have a hard time at least looking for them. I don't know how rare they are. Apparently they're really not that rare, but by this time in the season, most of the good ones have already been found by folks that are searching for them. Every once in a while I see these little piles of rocks and it has me wondering, cause this would probably be the kind of rock that might have that stuff in it. So I'm gonna bring this one with me and just test it with that black light when I get back to the vehicle. Over on the left is a shipwreck museum. It does cost money to get in there. I'm not sure exactly how much, but I bet it's worth it. Here's a little random path that goes probably back to the beachfront. We're about a 30 minute drive to the Taquamanam Falls, and so I'm gonna head that way. I'm trying to get the pictured rocks before I run out of daylight. This is another hour and a half drive from the Taquamanam Falls. So I'm from out of state and I bought my sticker last week and put it on upside down right there. So thank you so much. 
Do you know what they have here? Do you know what they have here? So the main trail is is definitely packed with a lot of people. So today I'm going to take this uh, nature trail to the river. And either way, it's less than a half mile walk to the upper falls here at Lake Taquamanon. So it's early August and it's 70 degrees out. In the shade here, it feels more like it's in the 60s. And even though I'm on the, uh, the nature trail, there's still plenty of foot traffic here. I'm getting close and I'm pretty excited because I've heard these are some beautiful falls. Let's just hope that the entire area is not lined up with uh, pedestrians. I mean, I can't control that, but, but I'd love to get a great view. All right, now I'm back on the main trail. I'm getting closer and closer to the falls and every couple hundred feet, there are some teaser lookouts where you can see the falls, you know, from the side, you get a little glimpse of it. I'm sure you can see a lot in the fall or the winter, but I believe right there. I may be at the actual waterfall now. This journey began with an almost impossible idea of taking in as much of Michigan's wild beauty as I could in a 48 hour period. And now I'm truly starting to believe that it's possible. I still have a lot left to experience, but so far every stop has been more rewarding than the last. And there's still so much more to see. All right, that's Tequemenin Falls. Now I've got to climb up these 94 steps without uh, breaking a sweat so I can make it to Pictured Rocks before the sun sets tonight. I guess there's no rush to get up because it is kind of a conga line, but it's a lot of steps, so I can completely understand that. So this parking lot is still busy. It's about 1.20 right now, and I'm heading over to my final destination for today. Pictured Rocks. I started this journey because I am feeling stuck in the grind. I've been on the road with work for quite a while, and while I'm out here, I have the opportunity of a lifetime to take it all in. If this resonates with you, I hope you'll join me on the rest of this adventure to regain my connection with nature. It's been quite a ride so far, and today, after a few detours, we're going to get a glimpse of one of America's most beautiful shorelines. I'm in a little bit of a rush, but there are two routes to get the pictured rocks. I'm going to Sable Point which is the northeast portion of pictured rocks one route takes me essentially on a highway that is almost like an interstate and the other route is going to take me through a place called deer park which is a bunch of back roads and because this is off-grid adventure you know i'm going for those back roads so today scenic route translates to bone jarring <laughs> I'm still about an hour away from the pictured rocks, but I wanted to stop here because I'm right up on Lake Superior and it is an amazing view. So I'm going to go down and check it out. So it's just crazy how nice it is in this area. The water is amazingly blue and it was hard to get to where I'm at and the washboard road coming up this way was kind of nuts it should have probably been obvious but it's too bright out here for this little uv light to to find any rocks but i feel like if there are any of those uper light rocks this would be the spot one thing that really surprises me about this lake is i honestly don't see any boats out there i'm sure they're out there but i guess there's no reason for them to come close to the shoreline over here so I'm gonna consider that success for today. I've made it at least into the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. Now I'm gonna stop over at the log slide dropout and see what the view looks like from there. There's some kind of building up ahead here. Looks like it could be a storm shelter, but it actually has, I don't know, is that a hay, hay bale transporter? I've never seen anything like that before. It looks like you might put bales of hay on it and transport them. And then there's some skid looking stuff. As I make my way to the edge of this cliff, I know that I wouldn't go back and change a thing so far. I wanted to disconnect and get away to take in the beauty. And I feel that this has been the perfect getaway, but I want to explore more. Oh 
know if you could see that just on the horizon there, but that is the Sable Point Lighthouse. Let's see if I can get through here without getting bitten by anything or falling. That's a pretty steep drop. So there's actually folks out there swimming. In fact, you can see some kids climbing up this uh, hill right here. <laughs> That's a pretty steep climb that they've got going on there. We're definitely not going to be able to find any of those Uperlite rocks here because the water literally ends right on the edge of the hill. Chipmunks everywhere up here and that guy is not even phased by me standing literally five feet away. But I'm going this way so which way are you going? I got here much sooner than I expected. So I'm still gonna try to head west to see if I can get to that Sable Point. Maybe I can go walk right up to the lighthouse and that'd be, that'd be an excellent closing shot for today's adventures. Now I'm not done with this video because I have one more stop tomorrow that I wanna make. But tonight I have to move south to the Hiawatha National Forest West region to do a, a little dispersed camping out there. I found what appears to be a perfect site on the map, but hopefully it's not as treacherous as the site that I picked on the map yesterday. Luckily yesterday, I found that alternate spot that was perfect for minivan camping. All right, and here we are at the trailhead to the Aw Sable Light Station. It says it's a mile and a half up. So for me, that'll be about 25, maybe 30 minutes if I'm taking my time hike each way. So that'll give me about an hour to get out there and back. Something that I really learned about the Upper Peninsula overall on this trip so far is that you don't necessarily need to get to the best, you know, spot, pictured rocks here to see the shoreline. I've seen the shoreline pretty much all the way around the Upper Peninsula as I've moved north and then west. Although I haven't seen the, the actual pictured rocks yet, but let's see how it looks right here. Oh man. So I met a guy earlier on the other shoreline and he was looking for some very large rocks and there's plenty of them right here. So I guess you just have to find the right place to get what you're looking for. I'd probably go down there and look at some of those rocks, but it's honestly about a 10 foot drop. And I'm afraid if I go down there, that it'll be hard to get back up and I'll do more damage to the erosion that's already occurring on the shoreline here. So I guess there's a shipwreck about 1500 feet straight off the coast of where I'm at now. It's about 10 shipwrecks that are recorded and been, have been recorded in this area. You can't really see any shipwrecks off this coast. And one thing I don't see that is a little concerning is that lighthouse. I feel like I've walked about a mile, but I probably spent all that time talking and that's why I haven't arrived there yet. So I'm heading this way. I just need to keep moving and stop flapping my gums so I can get to my destination. Just like last night over in the Hiawatha National Forest, there's a very strong smell of pine. I'm not overpowered by the smell of water, which usually has kind of a fishy smell. I'm not getting any of that here. So I'm almost there, I think, because there's a building up ahead and it looks white. All right, so this is it, guys. We're almost there. And this is what I've been wanting to get to all weekend long. And so getting to this lighthouse is the pinnacle of this trip. In this gentle afternoon breeze, I hear the waves lapping along the rocky shoreline. This lighthouse is a coastal guardian. I understand why it is here and know that it served as the coast beacon for almost 150 years. Today's journey has been filled with vast new landscapes and this moment humbles me. It's another reminder that life is about the journey, not just the end. Well, that's it. I guess my next stop is going to be dispersed camping in the National Forest. In life, in general, I'm very thankful that I'm healthy enough to just get up and walk five or six miles in a day without, you know, needing any extra supplies or taking excessive amounts of breaks or anything. Either way, I love doing this stuff and I'm gonna continue to enjoy it as much as I can. All right, guys, I'm back in the, uh, the National Forest here and I think I found a perfect spot. I've been, I've been scouting this uh, trail 
So one of the rules with the National Forest is you can't camp on the main trails, which in a vehicle you would think, hey, you want to, you know, park on the trail, but there might be someone coming through for some reason in the middle of the night. So we're not trying to block the, uh, the trails here. But I found a really good turnout that we'll get to in a second. There are flies all over the place. So when I get parked, I'm not going to want to get out of the vehicle because I don't want to have to deal with 100 flies. But I do want to back up for a minute because I was going to show you. I did see a spot that looked like it would be good to camp in if you were not going to go to the spot that I found before. And what it is is... Just right here, you can barely tell, but that's kind of a, a beaten old path. Right, right there is a beaten old path. And that's a perfect spot for you to camp in your vehicle. Now, keep in mind, if you don't have all wheel drive, I don't, I have front wheel drive. I've already been down that one and checked it out. You could get stuck. And so if I got stuck out here, it would be a shame, but it could be a day or two before someone was able to get me out so do keep that in mind as you are coming out into places like the national forest and there we are that's what i think is a perfect turnout for my van i'm gonna go ahead and pull in there and hopefully i've already walked it so the uh the terrain isn't too soft Normally I'd prefer to have a little more seclusion from the road because in the middle of the night, folks might come up and down here on their off-road vehicles while they're out having fun. Even though it's not necessarily as secluded as I would like it to be, it is in fact very secluded because it's on a forest service road well off of the main road. There are quite a few flies out here, but they really don't seem to be bothering me. Since I've spent so much time rushing to the parks today, I want to take a little time outside of the van and just relax. I had another great night sleeping in the van. It's 7 a.m. and Lake Kitch Itty Kippy opens at 8 a.m. Lake Kitchity Kippy is one of the clearest lakes in North America, and I want to see it on this trip. So let's head over there so we can be there when they open up. But first, I got to start my day off the right way with some coffee. Before I hit the road, I did want to show you kind of the view from this Forest Service road to my campsite. So there's another big field over here, but there's no vehicle access to that field. So if I was going to camp there, I would have to pitch a tent. This road heads straight west into the depth of the National Forest. And then moving over to the east, I have about two miles from here to the highway. Okay, so I am here at Lake Kitch Itty Kippy. So there is one of these uh, entry points where you come in and you have to show your, your state park passport. So if you don't have one of those, that's $39 for out of state and then $11 for in-state residents. And that's dependent upon your license plate, not necessarily your residency. I chose the park right there because there's uh, outhouses right there, some pit toilets. They were open when I got here. And then they're just now opening up the pit toilets over by the visitor center. So here we are, Lake Kitch Itty Kippy, and it is a no drone zone. So this place is known for the beautiful fish and scenery. So the little raft barge is already out on the water. I missed the first loop, which is okay. The, the GPS was a little off as I was coming out here. Check out that water. I don't know if the camera is doing it justice, but that water is a beautiful blue green color. So the word kitch itty kippy is a Ojibwa, Ojibwa Native American word. And there are many possible meanings, including the great water, 
the blue sky I see, the roaring bubbling spring. It seems like one loop going back and forth with this uh, guide wire navigation system probably takes about 30 minutes, maybe an hour at the most, depending on how, how much time you're gonna spend checking out the sites. Boarding this raft, I reflect on everything that has happened over the last two days. This beautiful lake is protected by fences, this raft, and a walkway. Now I know that I needed to see this. It's an amazing experience nestled in the heart of the Upper Peninsula. Lake Kitch, Itty Kippy is breathtaking, and I cannot capture its beauty in my camera, although I tried. This is one of the clearest lakes in North America, and it's fed through an underground river connecting to another local lake. The water bubbles, and strangely, all of the fish seem to be missing their right fins. I am thankful for the recommendations from all the locals as I planned this trip. Otherwise, I never would have imagined encountering so many stunning opportunities here. The Upper Peninsula is absolutely gorgeous, and there is so much more that I passed by on my way here. I must visit again. So even if you plan to get here early, it looks like these parking lots will be filled up by around 10 a.m. It's about half full right now, and there's cars coming in every minute or so. Well, guys, I couldn't have found a better place to close out this video. Over the last 40 hours, I experienced some of the hidden gems that Michigan's Upper Peninsula has to offer. I do have one major regret for this trip, and that is that I didn't take more time at each of these sites. Over the next month or two, I may be able to make it back up to the Upper Peninsula. And if that's possible, I would love to explore the pictured rocks, but I don't regret that I came up here and I don't regret that I saw everything I could. I was very excited to make this video and share my experience with you. So if this is something that you enjoyed, let me know in the comments, give me a thumbs up. Before I hit the road, make sure to subscribe because I am on a mission to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And more importantly, I hope that you enjoy these experiences as much as I do.